Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video is going to be how I made the dress I'm wearing, which you probably can't see, but if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, I'm using this chiffon fabric. It's a double border print, so it has this lovely floral design on the top and bottom of the fabric. I'm also using this sateen for the lining. And then onto the pattern itself. This is a princess seam bodice with a waist piece. I have two layers of fabric underneath my side front, my front, and then one layer of fabric underneath my waist piece on the fold. And then for the front bodice, I want to create a pleated piece. So I've just cut myself a rectangle of fabric, which you'll see in a second that I'm going to pleat. And then for the back, just two pattern pieces here, two layers of fabric underneath each. And then for the front skirt, I've made a toile of this and I've just lengthened my pattern piece and give myself an extra bit of width at the centre front, which again I'll pleat. And then for the back, I've given myself that extra little bit of length just to match the front and I've got two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. And then all of the same pieces for the lining. So this is my front pieces and my back. So that's all of my cutting out. So now to create those pleats. So I've taken that rectangle of fabric and I want to create a pleated piece the same size and shape of this one that I've just overlaid there. So I'm just going to start creating the pleats about an inch away from the top of the fabric and I'm just pinching the fabric and then running the iron over the top. I'm not measuring my pleats or anything here, I'm just doing this by eye and once I have the pleat created I'm just popping a pin in at each end in order to secure it until the fabric cools down. That will help the pleat to stay in place. So I'm just continuing in exactly the same vein. The pleats I would say are about 5mm either side. Popping in my pins. And I'm just going to repeat this process until I have enough pleats, as I say, to create the front bodice shape. And after about half an hour of pressing, I have enough pleats to create that front bodice shape. But before I can cut that out, I need to secure the pleats in place. So I'm just tacking the crease of each of the pleats. So I'm making sure my thread's going in each of those creases. Tying it off at the end. And then I'll do exactly the same thing to the other end. This will just make it a little bit easier to handle. And once that's done, I'm going to flip the whole piece right side down and then lay my backing piece on top. And I'm laying this about an inch away from the first pleat. So my center front is about an inch away from the first pleat. And again, I'm just going to tack the backing piece to the pleats. This will just allow me to cut around that shape without the pleats all falling apart before I secure it on the sewing machine. So that's it all tacked in place and I'm now ready to cut my shape. So once cut, this is what it looks like. And I've repeated that whole process again for the second side and now ready to stitch around the whole perimeter of that piece on the machine. So I'm stitching here within my seam allowance, back stitching at the start. 
trying to go as gently as I can over the top of the pleats. Pivoting at my corners and back stitching at the end. So that's my front bodice piece ready to go now. I can start assembling the bodice. So I've removed my tacking stitches and given it a little bit of a press. And as I say, ready for assembly. So I'm going to firstly attach my side front to my front. So I'm just lining up those two pieces. I have notches on these pieces. I'm lining those up first, then my waist, then my second set of notches and finishing with the shoulder seam and ready to stitch and of course I've done the same thing with my lining pieces so I won't show that on camera the stitching of that but I'm stitching it in exactly the same way as I'm stitching this piece so back stitching at the start at my one centimeter the whole way along and back stitching at the end that's how that looks and I've just went ahead and finished that seam edge so I've just ran it through the overlocker and given it a nice press done exactly the same thing on the lining and now on to stabilizing the neckline so I'm using the selvage edge here I've cut myself about a one centimeter width piece and just pinning it along the neckline of the front and the back. And now stitching here just a couple of millimetres within my one centimetre seam allowance. Back stitching at the start and the end. And that's just going to stop the neckline from stretching out too much. So that's that done. And now I'm ready to join the front and back at the shoulder seams for both the lining and the outer fabric. Back stitching at the start at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching at the end. And that's how that looks. And again, I've just finished off that edge on the overlocker and given it a nice press. So now I want to join my lining with my outer fabric at the centre front and back. So I've just laid my lining over my outer fabric right sides together, pinned and now stitching at my one centimetre seam allowance. Back stitching at the start and the end. And that's how that looks. So I've just finished that edge just in the same way as before on the overlocker and I've pressed it towards the lining. And now I'm understitching directly through the lining, through the seam underneath, about one millimeter away from the patterned fabric. I'm using a little bit of a longer stitch length here, back stitching at the start and the end. And that's how that looks. And that's just going to hold the lining fabric in underneath a little bit better. I've given it a nice press and now I'm ready to close up the arms. So again, laying my lining fabric over my outer fabric right sides together and pinning. And stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance. Back stitching at the start and the end and that's how that looks so before I turn the whole thing right side out I've just ran that seam line through the overlocker just to finish it off and now to pull the whole thing right side out I'm grabbing the fabric from the back at the shoulder seam and just pulling the whole thing through And after a little bit of a press, this is how it looks. So I'm super happy with this. 
my pleats are all nicely in place, my lining's all lovely and understitched, super neat and tidy. And now just to close up the side seams. So I'm just lining up my side seams, right sides together and pinning, ready for stitching. So seam again here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end. And once I finish that edge on the overlocker, this is how it looks. I've given it a nice press. And that's both my bodice pieces done. So now I want to join the two bodice pieces together at the wrap at the front. So I have a little bit of an overlap there and it's indicated by a couple of notches. So I'm just pinning those in place and whilst I'm at the machine tacking this in place, I'm going to tack the whole way around the bottom of the bodice. And I'm doing this because it'll just make it a little bit easier to work with this piece when they're joined together. So I started at the centre front there and worked my way to the back. And once the other side's complete, this is how it looks. So I'm setting the bodice aside for a second to work on the waist pieces. So I need to sew up the side seams of the waist piece, outer fabric and lining fabric. So I've just pinned those in place and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end. And of course I do the same thing on the lining and finish those seam edges as well. So I'm going to attach the waist piece starting with the lining. So I'm going to lay my lining on top of my bodice, right sides together. And I have a notch right in the centre. I'm going to line up my side seams and my centre back and then pin the whole way across. So quite a few pins here. <laughs> and I'm starting at the centre again and I'm stitching within my seam allowance this time. Back stitching at the start and the end. And of course I do exactly the same thing on the other side. And now to attach my waist piece of the outer fabric. So I've just pinned that in exactly the same way and this time I'm going to stitch at my one centimeter seam allowance. That will hide the stitch line you just seen me sew on the lining. And I'm doing it in the two stages like this just because it makes it so much easier and so much neater. So back stitch at the start and the end and just to clean up that seam, give it a nice press and this is how my bodice looks now. It's nice and clean on the inside. I love how this looks. So again, I'm going to set the bodice aside for a second and work on the skirt. So for my front skirt, I've created some pleats that are about six inches long and then they just fade away to nothing. I've created these pleats in exactly the same way as I did on the bodice and just to use that extra bit of space I gave myself that I showed you at the start on the front skirt pattern piece. And now just pinning up those side seams, right sides together, ready to stitch. So starting at the waist, at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching, the whole way along the side seam, and back stitching at the end. Exactly the same thing on the other side, and again, I'll finish off that seam edge on the overlocker and give it a nice press. You see that here, nice and neat. So for the lining, I'm not doing multiple pleats at the center. I'm just going to do one box pleat. So I'm just folding my fabric to the center to create the said box pleat and pinning in place before taking to the machine to run a line of tacking stitches along the top just to hold that box pleat while I continue to work on the dress. So within my seam allowance, 
back stitching at the start and the end. That will just hold everything nicely. And of course I do exactly the same thing on the lining in terms of sewing up the side seams. So that's how that looks. And now I'm ready to attach the lining first of all to the bodice. So I'm just laying my bodice right sides together with the lining and pinning in place. Ready to stitch. And just like the rest I've started at the centre at my one centimetre seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end. And I'll repeat on the other side. And just like the rest again, I finished off that seam edge and given it a nice press. And now exactly the same thing for the outer. So I've just laid my skirt over my waist, pinned in place, and now stitching at my one centimetre seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end. This is how the whole thing looks. So I finished that edge, given it a nice press, and now I have something that looks like a dress. So this is the front, inside of the front, and the back. So I only have a couple more things to do, one of which is to add a zip. But before I do that, I want to just strengthen that centre back seam just a little. The chiffon is so lightweight, I want to add a little bit of structure without it being too firm. So to do that, I'm using the selvage edge of my lining fabric, just about a one centimetre strip, and just sewing it right along where I'm going to put the zip. So I'm within my seam allowance here, back stitching at the start and the end, and that's how that looks. And now I'm ready to pop in my zip. So I'm using a conceal zip here and I'm just stitching right along the teeth edge, back stitching at the start and stopping about two inches before the zipper pull at the end. And of course I do the same on the other side. And now to attach the lining I've trimmed my lining seam down by about 5mm and I'm sewing here at about 5mm rather than the 1cm seam allowance. And I'm doing that because I don't want the lining to get stuck in the zipper teeth. So that helps solve that problem. Now just a little bit of trimming and finishing those edges. And that's my zip in place. And now I'm ready to close up my centre back seam below the zip on both the lining and the outer fabric. So starting just at the bottom of the zip and sewing right down to the hem, back stitching at the start and the end. And then on the outer fabric, starting at the hem and sewing up to the bottom of the zip. And when I get to the bottom of the zip, I'm being really careful to stop my stitch exactly where I stopped my stitch when I was installing my zip. That will mean I won't have any puckers or anything on the outside. And just to finish off those seam edges, so that's what my zip looks like and below the zip on the centre back seam. Nice and neat. And now the very last thing I have to do is finish off my hems. So I've just pressed up my hem on both my outer and my lining fabric one centimetre. Stitching here at about three millimetres or so away from that crease edge. I'm doing a rolled hem, a narrow rolled hem here. So I want to make sure this first line of stitching is very narrow indeed. So back stitching at the start and the end. And that's how that looks. So it needs a good press and the seam allowance trimmed down, which I've done here. And now I'm folding again and sewing right along the edge. So you could use a rolled hem foot here, but this method for me is feel safe. I really like it. So I'm trying to stick just along that edge right the whole way round 
back stitching at the start and the end. And that's how it looks on the inside and the outside. Nice and neat. And of course exactly the same thing with the lining. Done. And this is how the whole completed dress looks. So I have all of those lovely pleats in the bodice and the top part of the skirt. I have my skirt all nicely hemmed. And from the back, my zip nicely in place, that lovely V shape at the back and those waist pieces. Right the whole way down again to the hem and from the inside, lovely princess seams on the bodice, that nice box pleat. Nice neat hem. And then from the back, my zip all nicely in place. And this is what it looks like on. I absolutely love this dress. I love everything about it. Those pleats, mm, I love them. The waist detail, the empire line, and that beautiful sort of exaggerated A-line shape of the skirt. The wrap front, the V at the back, the fabric. I love everything about this. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful and maybe helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you in my next one. Bye folks.